I found the application process to be relatively quite straightforward. The career manager was actually quite simple and easy to use. And because of that also, it meant actually kind of like being able to sort of self-assess yourself on certain competencies and putting together an application which was kind of roughly straightforward in terms of your details, the questions and the, you know, the verifiers that you put on the report was all quite straightforward and simple. So it was quite easy. So I did get help from PRA. Um, to look over my application um, and I say have, probably having that in addition to having sort of my mentor who was he was a fellow already the IT sort of um, helped and so definitely increased the chance actually that you know my application was going to get accepted. So becoming professionally registered has benefited my career massively. Uh, a good example of that was when I left university and I had to show that I had a, a commitment to want to become professionally registered in the future um, to higher levels I eng and C eng Essentially, being able to show I was already in tech actually was a, went a long way in terms of showing that and potentially may have been a good reason why I was offered uh, the job that I was. I do use Career Manager and I say the best bit about it is actually just the ease of using it. Um, so being able to, for example, currently putting together my iron application, being able to do a self-assessment, tick where you think you're at, put evidence towards it and then be able to like export that out and put it in your application for iEng is, is massively helpful. So my typical working day varies from week to week, so sometimes I'm doing modelling, sometimes I'm um, doing programming, other times I'm writing reports or investigating problems and so forth. So it varies from week to week, from day to day really. I was inspired to become an engineer uh, partly because when I was at school I just loved building things. So that would range from woodwork, metalwork, electronics and naturally from there it followed on from wanting to know why things actually worked in the first place. So my journey towards EngTech status really started when I was in placement year, when I got the support of a fellow of the IET to help me put my application together um, before it being looked at by a professional registration advisor and then eventually sending it off. I wanted to apply to the IET partly because it had a nice broad umbrella in terms of subjects. Um, I kind of roughly knew I wanted to stay in engineering and the rough area of engineering I wanted to stay in. Um, but the IT gave me some flex in terms of if I decided to change my job title, and, you know, to become a hardware engineer later on in life, um, I, you know, I'd still have a relevant institution attached to my name. I managed success in my career by what well, I continuously learn and have new experiences, uh, you know. So when the year goes by and I look back and I reflect on what I've actually learned throughout the year, um, I know I've had a successful year if I've done lots of things that are different and new. Uh, that could be going to a conference and or be on board a, you know, an able platform doing measurements, something very different to what other people may do in their lives. So the next step for me professionally is essentially my iron application. So currently I'm in the process of putting that together and getting advice and support to kind of get it to a state where I can send that off and uh, hopefully get iron registration. My best bit of advice I could give to anyone starting the registration process would be to get a mentor and get used to a professional registration advisor and get your application to a really good state that they can look at it and actually provide some meaningful advice on, on your application before sending it off.